Well, um, Trump is standing by Justice Kavanaugh. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. um, he tweeted in reaction to your reporting that Kavanaugh should, quote, sue for libel or the Justice Department should come to his rescue. As if, as if, <laughs> Last night he called for, quote, the resignation of everybody at the New York Times, everybody involved in the Kavanaugh smear story. Your response? <laughs> um, our response is that we appreciate that um, the President of the United States is paying attention to our book. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think what's been lost in all this discussion is that what we try to do is kind of what we always do as reporters, which is seek the facts and put them out there and let people come to their own conclusions. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen, and I don't think we even anticipated to this degree, is that people have seized on certain things mm -hmm. and magnified them for their own purposes. Um, you know, frankly, it, you know, it's fine to have a, a series of Democratic candidates calling for impeachment, but that was before the book came out, which is today. Um, and you also have Trump kind of jumping on, on things as if we have an agenda, which, you know, that was not our intent. Our intent is to revisit these facts with detail and depth and you know, then kind of have people open their minds. It's so, kind of an important can, story, though, because if mm -hmm. he perjured himself when he was testifying under oath, then he, that's an impeachable offense, correct? It's perjury. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would That's be an why it's an important. Story. So here, here's my question: Has anyone actually read the book? Anybody that has any of the folks who have been tweeting I mean, about it's, it's, it? It's a good question because it's it out today. The pub day was today, today and it was right? embargo yeah. till today. Okay. And, you know, except okay. for those. Sunny has. <laughs> of course. Well, I well, well we all got yeah, the book. Yeah, we all got the book. But I'm I saying. I would love for those candidates to read it and then come back and they can still have their stance, but, right. but yeah. read the full picture of what went That's on, right. what you guys it, wrote. It's a rush to judgment. And, and yeah. I feel like we're living out right now, right here at this table, a version of the kind of the vortex and the problems that we're writing about well, as a of that, last year. Speaking yes. of rushing to judgment, yes. because the New York Times social media team also got a lot of blowback yeah. uh, for tweeting that the alleged sexual assault, quote, may seem like harmless fun. Um, they then had to delete the tweet and apologize for it. And Politico is now reporting, Robin, that you wrote that tweet. You can see how whoever wrote it, uh, it could be uh, tough for people that have been sexually assaulted to read a tweet like that. Was it you that wrote it? And, and if so, why not just say it was me and it was wrong? And okay, let's move uh, on. Now on the view, I am going to put this matter to rest. Make some news right here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, it was a, 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 a misworded tweet. But um, what happens at the Times is, you know, the reporters are asked to draft tweets. We also are asked, asked to draft suggested headlines. They don't always get used. They don't always get sent out. They often don't. I drafted this with this in mind to have actually the opposite effect, mm -hmm. which is to anticipate those who would say, a guy pulling right. down his pants at a party when they're drunk is, you know, on the spectrum of sexual misconduct. It's not sexual assault. It's not rape. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal? And to try to put in context Deborah Ramirez's experience mm -hmm. and to say, actually, it was a big deal mm -hmm. and that this can be quite meaningful, depending on where you come from. You know, right. maybe for yeah. me, a New Yorker, I would have said, get that out of my face. You know, she was coming from a very sheltered Catholic upbringing in a lower income um, kind of community, and she was a person of color, and she felt like maybe she didn't deserve to be at Yale in the first place. And so having that happen and have people laugh at her and target her mm -hmm. was actually hugely meaningful and made an impact on her life for the rest of her life. So for those who minimize it and dismiss it, um, I was trying to help them understand that it had the opposite effect, and it seemed yeah. to undermine that's her Twitter experience. Yeah. It, and, th and that's what the book, a, a lot of the book is about, to do. explaining the culture that she encountered yes. when she Which got there. Which actually is something people experience even now. That yes. was 36 years ago. But the, that's why we actually use that excerpt, because we yeah. feel like it's a timeless experience. Yes. Not everyone comes to Yale equally equipped to navigate that environment. Right. And I have Son. a hard out, but thank you for explaining that. A Supreme Court uh, spokeswoman said Kavanaugh had no comment on the new allegation or the calls for impeachment and has previously denied all allegations. All right. Well, our thanks to New York Times authors Robin and Kate. <laughs> Their book, The Education of Brett Kavanaugh, is out today. Pick it up. I think it will really open your eyes. We'll be back. Thank you.